Happy Monday morning to you Mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And join me today as I look at my haul for the month of January of 2020. So please stay tuned. Okay, so let's kick it off with this book right here. This is Bone, the one and all full color edition. I figured it was time to upgrade my black and white soft cover all in one. So I upgraded to this full color version. Um, I think there was a coupon on Amazon is where I ended up getting this book. Uh, I think it was like $30 off. It wasn't So the price was right and I've been waiting to find the limited edition one, the leather bound all in one, but I can never find it so I figured ah, I think it's time to go ahead and just get the colored version. Um, I've had the soft cover for I want to say just about a decade or so and I think it was time to upgrade to the color version because it, the colors are just beautiful on this book. It was originally printed in black and white, but I think the colors actually fit the book. And if you've never read this, it's about a little cartoon that leaves the cartoon world. It's wonderful. And this is the one volume edition. Comes in its own little slip case. I have done overviews of both TMNT and Transformers IDW Phase 2 Volume 10. Both these are Volume 10, by the way. So if you want to check those out, those are on the channel. Let's look over here at the Kyle pile. My buddy Kyle sent me some stuff, such as Red. This is from Warren Ellis. And Cully Hammer. Dang, that's cool. Princess book. Wildstorm. So this must be a little bit older. I guess this is under the DC label now. I'm surprised they haven't done a... Huh, I'm surprised I haven't done an oversized hardcover of this. Now, this is a book I've been wanting to check out. This is a Bobby Curno, Ghost Tree. It's kind of creepy looking. I love the art style. I don't want to flip too much through here because I know very little about it, but I know it's been getting some high prices. Then we have the Unknown Omnibus. This is Mark Wade and Mick Oosterweer. Oh my gosh, Oosterweer. Oosterweer. Sure. Sorry, Nick. My bad. I suck at pronouncing names. I know absolutely nothing about this other than the fact that it's printed by Boom. I think they're the ones that published this book. Yeah, Boom Studios, but I assume this is the complete collection. Now two books, I can't believe he found me, uh, are these. Now in the UK and I believe also in Australia um, and places like New Zealand, they have this wonderful idea where these hardcovers, the Transformers, I, I want to say it's a subscription hardcover. Uh, they are collecting everything from the Marvel run, the Marvel UK run, the Dreamwave, the IDW stuff. And I think it's wonderful, right? And the, and since there's no copyrights with like who owns what or anything, it's not a big deal to print like Marvel characters. So they started with, he got me volume 6 and volume 36. And I think much like the Marvel Epic Collections, they're released at different times. So this has the, actually, this is some of the Marvel UK stuff here, the Target stuff. And unfortunately, IDW stopped printing that Marvel UK classics. I think they canceled volume six finally. So maybe this is one way to get it. But these are available in um, UK. I know in Australia, because some of my subscribers have these. I think they're wonderful. But the best part about these is that the spines end up making this amazing image. I would love for something like this in America. I know they've done the same thing with Marvel and DC books, but it's one way for people to keep buying volumes, like volume 36, if you have this connecting spine. Now, I picked up Grass Kings, volume one. I think when I went to Nashville, I believe I did a haul video we went to the comic book stores and I found Grass King pretty cheap, volumes two and three. So I haven't read volumes one and two yet. This is by Matt Kent, the same guy that did Mind Management. And the artwork here is by Tyler Jenkins. So, well, it's got a Patton Oswalt little blurb right there. Next up is this Castle in the Stars books. These are translated from uh, the French. So I went ahead and bought volumes two and three. Because, oh my god, I remember reading the first one, I want to say uh, it was well over a year ago, and it reminded me of something uh, from Studio Ghibli or Miyazaki. That's why I really enjoyed it. Just look at this gorgeous artwork. 
Sad part is I have to wait until re uh, to read them because they come out once a year. So towards the end of the year is when they release these volumes. So for example, volume four, I believe is coming out in October of this year. And I guess I wanted to go ahead and pile these. Oh my gosh, just look at this. That, of course I had to mention Studio Ghibli. That, that looks just like a Studio Ghibli film. It is stunning to say the least. But the colors are just so gorgeous and vibrant. It looks like, you know, just watercolor paintings come to life. It looks like an anime from the 80s come to life. And that, that speaks to my heart. Anyway, can't flip too much through here. That's volume three. Now, last month, I did an interview with Peter David. He was at a small convention. And I got him to sign this, the Symbiote Spider-Man number one that I bought from him at his booth. Both Bob Wysick and Peter David signed the Incredible Hulk Omnibus volume one. I went ahead and upgraded my skinny trades for these thick trade paperbacks. These are the complete collections of Agents of Atlas. This is volume one. Um, this collects the very first uh, retelling, I guess, reintroducing these characters into the uh, Marvel Universe. And all of this is written by Jeff Parker. And if you have not read this run, I've always praised it. It's one of my favorite runs on recent Marvel and it also collects like the first appearances of the characters too. So you get a variety of golden age stories back here. All the characters that make up the agents of Atlas like Namora and Venus. My boy here, Jimmy Woo, who made an MCU appearance so who knows maybe one day we'll get uh, Agents of Atlas movie or TV show. Here's a book that I figured, I don't think this is going to be collected in the Wonder Woman by Gail Simone omnibus because this is Conan and now that's owned by Marvel so it'd be kind of weird. So if they're going to do that, they might as well do a Marvel vs. DC omnibus, right? That was solicited many years ago. But this is one that actually my buddy Kyle found for me. This is Wonder Woman Conan, written by Gail Simone. Aaron Lepresti is the artist who went on to do Gail, uh, Gail Simone's art on Wonder Woman. It happens to be one of these books that for some reason I did not end up reading. I don't know why, but I am going to fix that because big fan of Gail Simone, big fan of her Wonder Woman run, and I'm a big fan of Conan. Even though this is Conan through the Dark Horse years, it's still the same kind of character. Speaking of Dark Horse, I did an overview of Kabuki Omnibus Volume 1 and EC's Modern Love. And here we have a couple of volumes of Thunderbolts that I was missing. So spoilers, Thunderbolts won the reading poll on Patreon. So thank you to the patrons for voting for that. And it was very close too. It won by one vote over Flash. Now that we're moving on to the big books, I figured I'd go ahead and change the shot. Here is Niels, The Tree of Life. I know absolutely nothing about this book other than when we were looking at it, I believe it was an episode of Omnibros. I asked uh, the Gabe or just to click on it because I wanted to look at the artwork because I know Magnetic Press releases a lot of foreign books translated into English. And a lot of the times they have gorgeous artwork, kind of like the case of Titan comics or humanoids. And he clicked on it and I was like, okay, sold. That's all I needed to see. I saw like four pages and was hooked. Big fan of the artwork, and I will tell you right now, the font is a little small um, on the le the lettering, on the word bubbles, so I don't know if that's going to be a deal breaker or not for me. And, I mean, well, I am standing way over it right now. Yeah. So, that's one thing I noticed, but the artwork is just gorgeous. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Might need to get the old uh, magnifying glass for the old man here. To read this book in the very back there is a gallery section i think this is some of the stuff that i saw but i was like i don't know what this is i'm buying it i don't it looks it's got fantasy elements and the artwork looks gorgeous yes please not sure if this story is all in one or if it will continue into another volume or if it's a continuation of an existing story but I had to get it when I saw this gorgeous artwork. That's all I know. Magnetic Press. Okay, here comes another shout out. Thank you so much to my boy Benjamin Pineros, or probably more like 
Benjamin Piñeros. Muchas gracias, hermano. Thank you for letting me know that this book was finally out in print and in stock. So this is Mickey's Craziest Adventures. Uh, just a little bit about this book and then I'll tell you what happened. Um, pretty much a few years ago, these two guys stumbled upon these comic books uh, that were an anthology collection of Mickey Mouse that were not printed or archived by Disney, right? I don't know if, it, if they deemed it too crazy or the art style just didn't meet the standard, but they were forgotten. And they only found four of them, and, and there were more in existence. But there were one page, just adventures of Mickey's craziest adventure. As you can probably see, not all of it survived. And those were like the most rarest finds. There were only four of them that they found. And apparently there were a lot more. So not everything is collected in here. But, like, there's different chapters that are missing. So we go from chapter 24 to 27, as you can see. But they did collect or gather what they could and they made this book right here, which is Mickey's Craziest Adventures, uh, printed by IDW. And what's funny is I had this book on pre-order because I had heard about it for the longest time, and the pre-order sold out, like it was gone. And then I forgot about it, or I was just pissed off that I didn't get into the pre-orders. I'm like, ah, forget it, I don't care if that book is in existence. I don't wanna know about it, I'm a duck collector anyway. And out of nowhere, it, it went out of stock and it went for crazy prices uh, on the secondary market, like uh, Amazon Marketplace and eBay. And then it came back and had a small little print. And I think it's still, you can still get it places. But yeah, Benjamin hit me up and he was like, yo, I know you love Duck Comics, but you got to get this book. And I was like, holy shit, that's the book I had pre-ordered. Oh, and it sold out and now I can finally get it. Uh, yeah, so if you're a... Disney collector or a collector of these books, these comics, like the Duck Comics, this is your chance uh, to finally own this because now it is back in print. It is from IDW. It retails for $14.99. It's not that many pages. It's only, yeah, like 48 pages. But it's all they could salvage from this little rare gems that they found in an attic somewhere. Like I think they were uh, trying to find toys is what it was. The story is at the very beginning here. And then I went ahead and got Mysterious Melody, or How Mickey Met Minnie. This is also published from IDW. This one isn't rare, or it went out of print. Uh, this one's easier to find. Or maybe it did go out of print. This is its second printing that it's on. Uh, but it's just a collection of early Mickey Mouse comics. And I haven't, I haven't read this. I just flipped a little bit through here. And I think like halfway through, I'm like, wait a minute. If this is how Mickey met Minnie, where the hell is Minnie? I haven't seen Minnie the entire time. I think she does show up towards the end of the book. Now, I did an overview of the Batman Black and White Omnibus on the channel, if you want to check that out. But let's move on to these books right here. Because this is what I'm talking about. Yes, I, <laughs> I know that you all know I love my stories. I love, like, just comic books that have huge dialogue and are long-winded but holy crap do i also love me some just nonsense action ass kicking in your face oh i love the udon universe uh they're the ones that own the rights to street fighter and um and pretty much all the capcom stuff and dark stalkers which night warriors uh, they're also the ones that redid the pixelated art for Super Street Fighter 2 that was released digitally. Like, so you have Arnold, S actually, Alvin Lee and Arnold Sang were the two biggest uh, rock stars of that. So that is collected in this volume. So let's talk a little bit about this and then we'll talk about this one here. So this is Darkstalkers, Rise of the Night Warriors. This collects the entire series that was originally published in trade paperback. And there was also a thick um, softcover release. But this is wonderful. It's got artwork in here, like I said, mainly by Arnold Sang and Alvin Lee. But it also has people like Mark Brooks, um, Joe Madureira, Scotty Young, just doing the little interludes that were collected towards the back of each issue. But just look, I mean, that right there, this... This looks like a scene right out of an anime. That's the colors. Like, I've, I remember buying this cover and just hanging it up on my wall because I was like, man, I want to be that kind of colorist because that is so freaking badass. Oh, yeah. So this this is awesome. Like, you know, the, the books have been 
<laughs> they've been solicited for a long time, and then they got this is the Scotty Young story right here of BB Hood. They got solicited, and then they got canceled, and I was worried that they weren't ever going to come out. But they're finally here. They're finally out. It collects the original six-issue miniseries and then the three-issue follow-up, The Night Warriors. Just look at that. That's my boy right there, Chamba Cruz. Love that dude's art style. I think he went on to do a lot of the Street Fighter comics recently. Here's Mark Brooks. These are the covers in the back, by the way. And Arnold Sang covers. Of course, Joe Mad covers. This is a Joe Matt and Arnold Sank. Oh, man. I could go. And these are, I remember these were the foil covers. But also, Udon has worked, uh, their artists like Omar Dogan and Alvin Lee have worked at Marvel. I think they did some of the Deadpool stuff, the Agent X, and they also did the Age of Apocalypse, Return to the Age of Apocalypse series. Now, this book right here, this is the stories collected from probably almost 20 years ago. Yeah, I say 15 to 20 years ago. This one here is recent, though. This was this only came out. This storyline only came out a couple of years ago, and it's finally being collected in hardcover edition. And this is all that is out so far. So this is the recent storyline of Darkstalkers versus Street Fighters. Oh, that's awesome! I haven't flipped uh, through this one at all because I haven't read it. And this, <laughs> this is a take on the Marvel versus DC. Uh, by Dan, I think it was a cover by Dan Jurgens. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with that little mini series from the '90s, but this is Street Fighter versus Darkstalkers. Uh, both of these books, by the way, retail for forty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Now let's look at. I gotta move the camera because this next book and then these next set of prints are kind of big. So here we have Michael Morcox Elric. And I hope I'm pronouncing that dude's name right. Please let me know in the comments down below if I am not. This book is huge. I did. Um, I got volume one last year. I think Amanda uh, bought it for me. Just to give you an idea, this is a trade paperback and this is the book that I'm talking about. So far, I believe they've only done two. They've done the first book and then this one right here. This is Stormbringer. The, the, these are known as the deluxe edition. So there's the creators right there, based on Michael Moorcock's novel. And there is a forward. But let's look at this artwork. You know, I still haven't even read the first one yet. So I know there was an original series P. Craig Russell worked on. So let me know in the comments down below if you've read this run right here, or if you read the original novels, or if you read those uh, stories that I was talking about, the classic stuff by p craig russell but I, I i love oversized artwork and i love big books even though i'm not into artist edition because those are pricey and i think i've missed out on so many that they're out of print that if i get into them now it's going to cost me an arm and a leg just uh flipping a little more through here because there were some boobs so i had to edit that part out um let's look at the back and see if there's any extras okay so you have the author's bios and then a sketchbook one of the things that i love about this is that it feels like i'm pulling um or i'm turning two pages at the same time because the paper quality is so thick and it's glossy so okay there is the um ruby throne deluxe edition that i got so this is Stormbreaker, and i guess they need to do a white wolf deluxe edition and this is the classic stuff right here that um, Roy Thomas, gosh, that guy was writing everything. And I know P. Kerry Russell worked on, oh, Jan Dersima. Hmm. So let me know if you've read any of those too. Just recently on Old Reader, New Reader, Maddie, Tina, and I did a review of Sunstone. And my boy, shout out to Thomas Judge, sent us these prints. Not only the prints, but they're also framed. These are freaking gorgeous. I told my wife I need to make room now. And this is just some of them, not all of them, because I can't obviously show all of them. But yeah, these are some of them and what they look like. That are like, <laughs> I think some of them are like, it's the whole year, but then there's also many other months included in here, like extra months. Like there's two Marches and two Julys. So thank you so much, Thomas. These are absolutely gorgeous and I promise I will make room. 
And if you're interested in picking up any of these books, you can purchase them from CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my haul for the month of January of 2020. Let me know in the comments down below what you ended up picking up or what you're looking forward to this month. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Also, if you want me to review or do an overview of any of these books, let me know in the comments down below. That is if I haven't already done them. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.